Okay, class, today we're in section 2.6, find rational zeros. Before, you found the zeros of a polynomial function given one zero. Now, you will find all real zeros of a polynomial function. Key vocabulary, zero of a function, constant term, leading coefficient. The polynomial function f of x is equal to 64 times x to the third power plus 152 times x to the second power minus 62x minus 105 has negative 5 over 2, negative 3 over 4, and 7 over 8 as its zeros. Notice that the numerator of these zeros, negative 5, negative 3, and 7, are factors of the constant term negative 105. Also notice that the denominator 2, 4, and 8 are factors of the leading coefficient, 64. These observations are generalized by the zero, by the rational zero theorem. Now, the rational zero theorem says if f of x is equal to a sub n times x to the n plus all the terms in between, continuing at a sub 1 times x plus a to the 0 has integer coefficients, then every rational 0 of f has the following form. p over q. p, that's the factor of the constant term. q, that's the factor of the leading coefficient. So all of this right here, the main thing it's saying is, has integer coefficients, that's key, has integer coefficients, then every rational zero of f has the following form. P, that, that's going to stand for the factor of the constant term, and Q, that's the factor of the leading coefficient. So in other words, P over Q. Example 1. List possible rational zeros. List the possible rational zeros of f using the rational zero theorem. A. f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Factors of the constant term are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And don't forget, you must have a positive and negative version of each one. So in other words, all the factors of 12 are listed. Factors of the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient here is 1. So that's going to be real simple, plus or minus 1. So possible rational zeros would be, would be 1 over 1, plus or minus, 2 over 1, plus or minus, 3 over 1, plus or minus, 4 over 1, plus or minus, 6 over 1, plus or minus, and then 12 over 1, plus or minus. Now don't forget, all this is based on P over Q. The constant term, that's the P. The leading coefficient term, that's the 1. And the theorem says P over Q. P over Q. So we just computed P over Q. And don't forget that all the um, leading coefficients, all the coefficients must be integers. All right, now let's take a look at B. F of X is equal to 4 times X to the fourth power minus X to the third power minus 3X squared plus 9x minus 10. All right? So we're going to look at that constant. That's going to be that 10. And we're going to look at a lead, leading coefficient, which is going to be the 2. I mean, which is going to be this 4 right here, which means it's going to be slightly more work. So once again, constant is 10. Leading coefficient is 4. Factors of the constant term, 10, would be 1, 2, 5, and 10 plus or minus for each one. Factors of the leading coefficient, 4 would be 1, 2, and 4, positive and negative 
for each one. So a possible rational zeros then would be, then you take all the factors of 10 and you put it over one. That's what it did here. One, two, five, and 10, everything's over one. You take the same factors of 10 and now you put them over two. So one, two, five, and 10, they're all over two. Take all the factors of uh, 10, and now you put it over four. So one over four, two over four, five over four, 10 over four. And don't forget, everything has to be plus or minus, plus or minus, positive or negative. Okay, now you simplify the list of possible zeros making sure not to write the same number twice, making sure not to write the same number twice. So one over one, that's gonna be one, two over one, that's gonna be two, five over one, that's gonna be five, 10 over one, that's gonna be 10. Now one over two, that's gonna be one over two, two divided by two, that's gonna be one. We already have that. so. No need to write the one twice. Five over two, we don't have that yet. 10 over two, well, that's equal to five. We already have that at five. One over four, we don't have that. Two over four is equal to one half, so we don't need that. That's already there. Five over four, we don't have that. And then 10 over four, that reduces down to five over two, and we already have that. So this would be our simplified list of all the zero factors, of all the possible zero factors, I should say. Verifying zeros. Recall that when you have found zeros of polynomial functions, when one zero is known, recall that you have found zeros of polynomial functions when one zero is known. The rational zero theorem is a starting point for finding zeros when no zeros are known. The rational zero theorem is a starting point for finding zeros when no zeros are known. However, the rational zero theorem lists only possible zeros. In order to find the actual zeros of a polynomial function f, you must test values from the list of possible zeros. You can test values by evaluating f of x using the test value as x. Example two, find zeros when the leading coefficient is one. Find all real zeros of f of x is equal to x to the third power minus 8x squared plus 11x plus 20. Solution, step one, list the possible rational zeros. The leading coefficient is one and the constant term is 20. So the possible rational zeros are one over one, two over one, 4 over 1, 5 over 1, 10 over 1, 20 over 1, plus or minus for each one. Now, so far, all you've done was to repeat example 1. So far, all you've done was to use the information or the techniques, the technique you've learned in example 1. Don't forget your factors of 20. That's on top. The leading coefficient is only 1. So all you got to worry about on the bottom is just 1. Now notice, even though you have all these factors, not all these factors will give a zero value. Not all these factors will give a zero value. Notice that not every possible zero generated by the rational zero theorem is an actual zero of f. You won't know that till you test it out. Now you're going to test by using synthetic division. In other words, now you're back in section 2.5 of your Algebra 2 textbook. You're going to test these zeros using synthetic division. Step two, test these zeros using synthetic division. Okay, so our first possible zero is one. One divided by one is one. So we put one on the outside. All right, don't forget it's a positive and negative version. So we put one on the outside. Now we're using synthetic division. So we write down the coefficient of each term. So that's one. That's negative eight. That's 11. And then that's 20. We bring our one down. 
Remember that first term always comes down. Then we multiply one times one, that's one. Negative eight plus one is a negative seven. Then we say one times a negative seven. One times a negative seven, that is a negative seven. Then we add going down. 11 minus seven is four. One times four is four. 20 plus four is 24. So this is not a zero. So we know that one is not a possible zero. Okay, so now we test out negative one. Don't forget plus or minus one. So now we test out negative one. Write our function down as usual. First term comes down. One, negative one times one is a negative one. A negative one plus one is a negative nine. A negative one times a negative nine is a positive nine. 11 plus nine is 20. A negative one times 20 is a negative 20. 20 plus a negative 20 is zero. So negative one is a zero term. Negative one is a zero term. Now, because negative one is a zero of f, you can write f of x is equal to x plus one. You can write f of x is equal to x plus one times, now we can write this as our trinomial, right? We know our zero term is um, just zero. We know our constant has to be 20. The negative nine means a negative nine x, and the one means x squared. So once again, because negative one is a zero of f, you can write that as x plus one. So it had to be the opposite, x plus one, right? Uh, and then we write this as our trinomial. And now we are ready to factor this trinomial to find the other zero terms. Okay, now when you factor this trinomial, x squared minus 9x plus 20, this one should be a, an easy one. You can use the box method or just apply what you know. All right, now I've got to come out with a 20, right, by multiplication, but come out with a negative 9 through um, addition. So, in order for it to happen, I must have a negative 4 and a negative 5. Negative 4 times a negative 4 is a positive 20. Negative 4 plus a negative 5 is a negative 9. So, uh, my zeros then would be negative 1, which we already found, positive 4, and positive 5. Now, why is that? Because if I put a positive 4 here, it'll make that go to 0. If I put a positive 5 there, it'll make that go to 0. And we already know this right here with negative 1, it'll go to 0. That's why up there, instead of saying negative 1, we wrote this as x plus 1 in this position. Limiting the search for zeros. Limiting the search for zeros. In example 2, the leading coefficient of the polynomial function is 1. When the leading coefficient is not 1, the list of possible rational zeros can increase dramatically. In such cases, the search can be shortened by sketching the function's graph. 